chondrules have a large variety in their texture, structure and overall appearances, especially when we look at them in 2D sections. Now here I will review the most abundant chondrule textures and how these are used to classify the chondrules. We start with light microscope images. And here we can already see a number of typical features like chondrules are always round to at least roundish and they appear in various sizes so they are large chondrules, smaller chondrules, tiny chondrules all in one metroite. Of course these are um, in part sectioning effects, the sizes, but these tiny ones are certainly not a sectioning effect. Further we can see that the chondrules contain in this case small grains, mineral grains with some black material in between or in this chondrule they are, the minerals are more oriented like bars. Now we typically look at chondrules in backscatter electron images as chondrules are quite small and here we get a higher res resolution and more details. These here are all porphyritic chondrules and porphyritic chondrules are the most abundant type. So maybe 80, 90, volume percent, percent of all the chondrules are in fact porphyritic chondrules. Then all the chondrules are classified in various types. One subclassification is type 1, type 2, whereas type 1 means magnesium rich and type 2 iron rich. Now these are all porphyritic chondrules that are magnesium rich, so these are all of type 1. When we then look at the chondrules, then we see that these have these individual grains, which in this case are all olivine. So there's olivine within the chondrules. And these are the porphyritic grains, why these are called olivine. Uh, porphyritic chondrules. And at the border there is pyroxene, so a second porphyritic mineral grain here are the pyroxenes. And then there is in between all these porphyritic minerals something grayish which is either fine crystalline or glassy. Now this already indicates that chondrules must have cooled very rapidly, otherwise it's not possible to retain for example glass. So there's some genetic information stored in this. Then this mesostasis, as this material is called, so this is mesostasis, all this grayish material here, is calcium aluminum rich. And thereby we have all the main elements from the solar system composition, the chondrule, the magnesium, the silicon, of course the oxygen, and about an order of magnitude below then there's the calcium and aluminum. Now the iron is stored either in opaque phases, as we can see here, for example, so this might be metal or sulfide, or in type 2 chondrules in the silicates, because these are more iron-rich. And then we can see in all of these porphyry chondrules, so there's always the, the olivine here, and at the border very often, then there's the pyroxene, and below the same. So showing a couple of these is just to really illustrate the already within the porphyritic pyroxenes, the variety and similarities of the chondrule types. You can also see that some of the chondrules, as indicated here, have some kind of dust stream. So all of this is matrix around, but there's a, a, a distinct additional rim here that must have accreted onto the chondrule later or maybe added on the pan body. Now I said the iron is very often located, in particular in Taiwan chondrules, in opaque phases like metal. And the metal is always bright because Electron backscatter electron images are set contrast images, set meaning atomic number. Iron has a high atomic number, almost twice in um, magnesium silicon, for example. This is so it backscatters more electrons, and this is why it's bright in these backscatter electron images. And then we can see that in cases, these opaques are um, have this kind of concentric structure within the chondrule. So the chondrule borders basically here, so this concentric ring is inside the chondrule. But it can also be at the border of the chondrule, like down here. So in this case the uh, metal is all um, low, or the opaque might be sulfate as well, located at the border, but of course also here, for example, in the core. It can be heterogeneously distributed throughout the entire chondrule, or it can be in large blebs, again, at the border of a chondrule. And of course it might be that if this is a chondrule and there's a blap of an opaque phase and the chondrule is cut here, then we don't see this opaque phase, 
but we see it when we cut here. So the previous corners I showed might also have some opaques just at another, um, well, at, a, at another location within them that was not cut. Further, again, here you can see that there is this kind of dust rim here. So this is something that is quite frequently observed in different um, thicknesses and um, compositions. And as I said, might be something that has been added um, earlier in the nebula or later on the parent body. Now also the, the blaps of opaque faces here, or they are often quite brownish and blap-like, likely formed when the chondral is molten and then the silicate and the opaque face exolved like water and oil, because these are not miscible. Then there are the porphyritic corners that are of type 2. So again, now these look rather similar than the type 1 porphyritic chondral. So there's a porphyritic chondral. This is another one here. And of course, this is quite visible. And, and this one here, um, for example, so here the silicates are a little brighter because they contain now the iron. We can also see that some of the olive ring grains, like here, they have a more grayish core, and this is a relict core of uh, olivine grain that initially was more magnesium rich, and then by um, iron was added basically to this olivine, thereby becoming more iron rich. And uh, also, the type 2 chondrules typically have less opaque phase content than the type 1 chondrules. Also here we can see in this one here there is this, again a ring, but in this case it's not pyroxene, but in this case it is Si2. This is more rare, but can also apparently occur. Now all the um, porphyritic chondrules are often mineralogically zoned as indicated earlier, but this is not necessarily easy to see. For example, these two chondrules both have a mineralogical zonation, but you can't really see this here. This is why we use face maps in which the individual minerals are color coded. So in this case, the olivine is red and the pyroxene is blue. And in this, well, with this color scheme, the mineralogical zonation is very easy to see. And then we call this the mineralogically zoned porphyritic chondrules or the mineralogically unzoned porphyritic chondrules, although the the second type is not, not shown in these images, but was shown previously, so it's not that all the chondrites have it. They are quite abundant in carbonaceous chondrites, but less in the other classes. Now these here are quite um, illustrative, nice images of a chondrul basically in 3D. So this is a secondary electron image here. This is a chip of a meteorite. And now we look really inside a chondrul here. So these are individual grains of Forstrite, for example, there's some more pyroxene here at the rim. And if it enlarges a little bit, so again, here are olivine grains. The matrix is broken out, likely. But this is really very nice how you can see the individual crystals that formed from the chondrule melt. Then as another type, there are barred olivine chondrules. So there are bars that I can, for example, nicely seen down here. These are all olivine bars, and in between is the mesostasis. Same is here, so these are all the, the olivine grains here, and this is more like a, at the border of maybe porf, um, porphyritic to barred olivine. Now these barred olivine grains likely formed as a melt initially, of course, but this melt was entirely free of any seed crystals. And if this melt then quenched, so cooled very quickly and rapidly, the energy must be, must go somewhere. And it goes to the surface of the um, skeletal olive in it form. Skeletal olive has a very high surface, and this is where all the energy goes to. And this, if this skeletal olive is cut, then it looks like bars. And this is how these barred olivine chondrules formed. So these are here the barred olivine chondrules. Then there are the porphyritic olivine or porphyritic olivine pyroxene chondrules, depending on how much olivine py pyroxene is in there. So the difference is that these, of course, also were once molten, but these had a number of seed crystals in them. And these seed crystals were the location where the olivines and maybe later also the pyroxene formed. Now this again is a genetic information here, because the 
um, melt for the bad olivine cornwalls must have been either at a very high temperature, which destroys all the seed crystals, or it must have been at the same temperature as the porphyritic crystals uh, melts, but for a longer time. So the porphyritic olivines, they were just for the porphyritic, um, the melt of the porphyritic cornwalls was at high temperature for smaller amount of time than the bad olivine cornwalls. And therefore, the melt of the porphyritic chondrules retained some seed crystals and the part they did not. And then there are a couple of chondrules down here that have again bars, but this is more like, but this is pyroxene, and in this case, when there was a melt, so this is not a bad olivine chondrule anymore, there was a melt, more silicon rich, and if this was undercooled and there was a seed crystal, very rapidly individual bars of pyroxene form, and this is then a radial pyroxene chondrule here. So this is an, another type then. Now then, there are a couple of more rare types, like for example, up there these are cryptocrystalline chondrules, cryptocrystalline chondrules. They might have some structure or no structure at all, so they look just homogeneous like glass. Or this might be something like a micro porphyritic chondrule, so this is basically a subtype of a porphyritic chondrule, so there are just smaller porphyritic grains in here. Then there are some exolution structures here and also almost cryptocrystalline chondrules or something very an unusual material where this is all SiO2, maybe crystallite in between as pyroxene, so it must have been an exolution of silica and pyroxene, but as said, these are more rare types and there's a whole zoo of these. It is then also possible that chondrules might collide with each other and fuse together. And this then forms compound chondrules. So this might not be seen in the first instance, but if I outline this a little bit, you can see there's a yellow chondrule and there's a green chondrule and these collide and fuse together, building this compound chondrule and there might be even also again a dust rim around this, in this case a more thicker one here. And this can also happen rather frequently. Actually, these compound cones are quite important, as we can use them to um, determine a density, chondral density, in a reservoir, and there may might be some two to three percent of these compound chondrules. So in summary, there are the porphyritic chondrules, like um, and these might be um, subdivided in PO, POP, and PP for porphyric olivine, porphyric olivine pyroxene, and porphyric pyroxene chondrules. Although most of the chondrules have a mineralogical zonation, and this um, PO, POP, and PP might be just a section effect where olivines or chondrules have an olivine core surrounded by pyroxene, and then if this chondrule is cut, say, here, this looks like a PP chondrule. If the chondrule is cut here, this looks like maybe a POP chondrule. If it's cut here, it looks more like a PO chondrule. So therefore, this PO, POP, PP might be really more descriptive, not necessarily genetic. Whereas a zoned chondrule, so if we call this um, here the MZP and MUP chondrules, then this might be a genetic information because the formation of the pyroxene rim might be an exchange of material with the surrounding where the olivine in the core, or the just olivine, initial olivine, to, um, in reaction with the surrounding SiO rich gas produces the pyroxene rim. So there might be a genetic information in there. Then there are the barred olivine chondrules, the radial pyroxene chondrules, cryptocrystalline chondrules, microporphyritic chondrules, and so on. So the most abundant types are certainly those, and 80-90% um, porphyritic chondrules and bad olivine radial poly pipes in each maybe around 5% or so, and, and then the rest. Uh, so the most important are, of course, those here. And then finally, there are also the compound chondrules. So these are the various textural types, or the main textural types, and how chondrules are classified according to these types. But also, there's a lot of genetic information in there, like um, glassy, fine mesostasis indicating very fast cooling after the brief high temperature event, the mineralogical zonation indicating the exchange with the surrounding 
material, the compound chondrules, telling us something about the chondral density from, from the collision uh, density and so on. So we can learn a lot about genetic uh, uh, the chondral formation itself as well.